Hello friends, welcome to To The Point. In today's session, let's discuss about Comptroller and Auditor General of India, which in short called as CAG. Our Constitution of India, according to Article 148, it provides for an independent office for CAG. And CAG is the head of Indian Audit and Accounts Department. He is said to be the guardian of public purse. And he controls the entire financial system of our country at the both central and the state levels. His duty is to uphold the constitution of India and the laws of the parliament in the field of financial administration. And this is the reason why Dr. B. R. Ambedkar said that Kak shall be the most important officer under the constitution of India. And CAG is one of the bulwarks of the democratic system of government of India. And the others, they are being the Supreme Court, the Election Commission and the Union Public Service Commission. Appointment and term of CAG. So generally the CAG is appointed by the President of India by a warrant under his hand and seal. And the CAG before entering his office. He takes an oath in front of the president and the oath or affirmation says that he would bear the true faith and allegiance to the constitution of India and he will uphold the sovereignty and integrity of India and he would duly and faithfully and to the best of his ability, knowledge and judgment he will perform the duties of his office without the fear or favour, affection or ill will. And he will also uphold the constitution and the laws. So the CAG, he holds his office for a period of 6 years or up to the age of 65 years. So whichever comes early. So CAG can resign any time from his office by addressing or giving his resignation letter to the president of India who appoints him. And he can be removed by the president on the same manner and on the same grounds as it is done for the judge of the Supreme Court. So we can say that CAC can be removed by the president on the basis of a resolution that is passed to that effect by both the houses of parliament with a special majority either on the grounds of proved misbehavior or incapability of CAG. Independence of CAG. The constitution it had made several provisions to safeguard and ensure the independence of Comptroller and Auditor General of India. So in that, CAG is provided with security of tenure. CAG can be removed by the President only in the accordance with the procedure that is mentioned in the Constitution. And therefore, he does not hold his office till the pleasure of the President, even though he is appointed by President. So, CAG is not eligible for further office, either under the government of India or under any state, after he ceases to hold his office. That is, once the eligibility as a CAG gets completed, that person who was CAG before, he cannot work under the government of India or under the government of any state. So, the salary and other service conditions they are determined by the parliament. So his salary is equal to that of Supreme Court's judge. His salary nor his rights in respect of the leave of absence, pension or age of retirement, it can be altered to his disadvantage after his appointment. So the condition of the service of a person serving in an Indian audit and the accounts department and the administrative powers of the CAG, they are prescribed by the parliament after consultation with Comptroller and Auditor General, that is CAG. The administrative expenses of the office of the CAG, including his salary, allowances, pensions of persons serving in that office, they are charged upon the Consolidated Fund of India, that is they are not a subject to the oath 
of the parliament and no minister can represent the kag in parliament and no minister can be called upon to take any responsibility for any actions done by kag duties and powers of comptroller and auditor general of india so according to article 149 of our constitution it authorizes the parliament to prescribe the duties and powers of kag in relation to the accounts of the union and of the states and of any other authority or body and according to it the parliament enacted kag's duties powers and conditions of service act in the year 1971 and this act it was amended again in 1976 to separate accounts from audit in the central government the duties and functions of the kag they are laid down by the parliament and the constitution let's discuss the duties and powers of kag so kag audits the accounts that is related to all the expenditure from the consolidated fund of india consolidated fund of each state and the consolidated fund of each union territory that is having a legislative assembly kag audits all the expenditure that is from contingency fund of india and the public account of india as well as the contingency fund of each state and the public account of each state and that is meant as he audits all the expenditure of our country as well as states so kag audits all trading manufacturing profit and loss accounts balance sheets and other subsidiary accounts that is kept by any department of central as well as state governments kag audits the receipts and expenditure of the center and each states to satisfy himself that the rules and procedures in that behalf they are designed to secure an effective check on the assessment collection and proper allocation of the revenue kag audits all the transaction of the central and state governments that is related to debt sinking funds deposits advances suspense accounts and remittance business kag audits accounts for any other authority when it is requested by the president or governor for example the audit of local bodies so kag advises the president with regard to prescription of the form in which the accounts of the center on the states shall be kept and this comes under article 150 of our indian constitution then according to article 151 of our indian constitution kag submits his audit reports that relates to accounts of the center to the president and president in turn he will place those reports in front of both the houses of the parliament and according to the same article 151 kag he submits its audits report that relates to the accounts of the state to the governor and governor in turn he will place them before the state legislatures kag ascertains and certifies the net proceeds of any tax or duty and his certificate is final and this is according to article 279 of the constitution what is this net proceeds net proceeds means the proceeds of a tax or a duty minus the cost of collection kag acts as a guide friend and philosopher of public accounts committee of the parliament so kag compiles and he maintains the accounts of state governments so in the year 1976 kag was relieved of his responsibilities with regard to the compilation and maintenance of the accounts of the central governments so due to the separation of accounts from the audit that is departmentalization of accounts and therefore the kag submits three audit reports to the president so audit report on appropriation accounts audit report on finance accounts and the audit reports on public undertakings so these are the three reports that should be submitted by the cog to the president role of the cog the role of cog is to uphold the constitution of india and the laws of parliament in the field of financial administration 
to the accountability of executive that is the council of ministers to the parliament in regard in respect to the financial administration it is secured through audit reports of the cag and this cag he is said to be the agent of the parliament and he conducts audit of expenditure on behalf of the parliament and therefore cag is responsible only to the parliament so this cag has more freedom with regard to audit of expenditure than with regard to the audit of receipts stores and stocks so whereas in relation to expenditure he decides the scope of audit frames and his own audit codes and manuals he has to proceed with approval of executive government in relation to rules for the conduct of other audits also the cag he has to ascertain whether money shown in the accounts as having been disbursed there was legally available and applicable to the service to which they have been applied that means cag verifies whether the state governments and the central governments they use the money for that purpose for which they have applied the secret service expenditure it is a limitation on the auditing role of the cag so in this regard the cag cannot call for particulars of expenditure that is incurred by the executive agencies but he has to accept a certificate from the competent administrative authority that the expenditure has been incurred under his authority the constitution of india it visualizes the cag to be the comptroller as well as the auditor general and in practice cag is fulfilling the role of an auditor general and not that of comptroller so we can say that the cag has no control over the issue of money from the consolidated fund and many departments they are authorized to draw money by issuing checks without specific authority from the cag and cag is concerned only at the audit stage when the expenditure has already taken place so regarding this the cag of india he differs totally from the cag in britain so cag in britain he has both the powers of comptroller as well as auditor general so simply we can say that in britain the executive he can draw money from the public exchequer only with the approval of the cag so that is not in case of india cag and corporations the role of the cag in the auditing of public corporation it is limited and broadly speaking his relationship with the public corporation it falls into three categories let's have a brief discussion on it in some corporations they are audited totally and directly by the cag for example damodar valley corporation oil a natural gas commission air india indian airlines corporation and others and some other corporations they are audited by private professionals auditors who are appointed by the central government in the consultation with the cag so if necessary the cag can conduct supplementary audit and the examples are central warehousing corporation industrial finance corporation and others some other corporations they are totally subjected to private audit so we can say that their audit is done exclusively by the private professional auditors and the cag does not come into the picture at all they submit their annual reports and accounts directly to the parliament examples of such corporations are lic that is life insurance corporation of india rbi reserve bank of india SBI State Bank of India FCI Food Corporation of India and so many others the role of the cag in auditing of government companies it is also limited and they are audited by the private auditors those who are appointed by the government on the advice of the cag and the cag he can also undertake the supplementary audit or test audit of such companies aplabi's criticism paul h aplabi in his two reports on indian administration he was very critical of the role of the comptroller and auditor general of india and attacked the significance of his work so he also suggested that cag should be relieved of the responsibility of 
audit. So we can say that he recommended the abolition of office of Kag. Let's discuss about the reasons of criticism of Paul. The function of the Kag in India is in a large measure, that is an inheritance from the colonial rule. That is, he is mentioning that since from the colonial rule, the function of the Kag in India is in practice and that is inherited. And the Kag is today a primary cause of widespread and paralyzing unwillingness to decide and to act. So auditing, it has a repressive and a negative influence. The parliament has greatly exaggerated notion of importance of auditing parliamentary responsibility and so has failed to define the functions of the CAG as the constitution contemplated it would do. And the CAG's function is not really a very important one according to Paul because the auditors do not know and cannot be expected to know very much about good administration. Their prestige is highest with others who don't know much about administration. A deputy secretary in the department, he knows more about the problems in his department than the comptroller and auditor general of India and his entire staff. And these are all the criticism of Paul H. Applebee's. Hope you all are clear with the topic CAG. See you in the next session with some other interesting topic. Thank you.